today, you're going to learn how to make this Oppulse effect. Super Mega Awesome Intro. Okay, look, the very first thing that you need to do is rotoscope the op. I'm not gonna go over that in this video because there's a million different ways to do it. So if you wanna learn more, check out this video. My suggestion is to rotoscope just the op. Notice how I don't have the hands included here. That way when we apply the effect, it's not getting applied well to the hands. Anyways, what you can do now is highlight both clips, right click, new fusion clip and head on into fusion so media in two that's our roto clip and that means media in one that's our background let's relabel this f2 roto f2 bg and you know what i hate the way that davinci resolve sets this up because this is a foreground element it should be sitting above the background element something like this that makes a lot more sense but <laughs> Okay, after the roto clip, what we need to do is add some edge detect. Bam! Uh. I'm gonna bring this into the first window by hitting one on my keyboard. And as you can see, this looks awful, but we can fix that. So if we change our mode from RGB to grayscale, uh, we can pick a solid color now. It's still not looking great, but that's because our edge width is making this kind of blurry. So if we bring this down, it'll sharpen up. And then our gamma, well, that kind of detects the edges. So let's bring that up. And then brightness, well, that does exactly what it sounds like. The next thing we're gonna do is add in a soft glow node. What I like to do is change my color scale to match the edge color. So we're gonna push in a little lot of bit of red and a little lot of bit of blue. So we get this purpley color. And um, you know, now we can fine tune that gain and the glow size. Now this is looking pretty good, but it's not exactly what we want because we just need the edges all glow. So in our merge, what we're going to do is change the apply mode to screen. And we can double check this if we just turn off our merge node by clicking this button right here. Hey, 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 that's looking pretty good. The last thing we need to do is animate the edge detect coming in and out. So let's find the frame where we start to pull this thing, thing, my bob, but you're right there. So like, like. 48 maybe maybe we'll do frame 45 what you want to do is grab a rectangle node and drop it below the merge and connect it to that blue arrow Ooh. let's change the shape of this rectangle we're gonna make it a little less tall a little bit wider and then we're gonna change the angle of it and just to get a idea of what we're looking at let's just place it over the op if we turn off the outline by checking show view controls you can see we have this hard edge and it doesn't look good so let's bump up the soft edge and you know what looking at this we got to increase that angle a little bit more something like that that's looking pretty good but let's just turn the outline back on and we're gonna drag this off of the up so we don't have any glow then we're gonna add a center keyframe move over until we pull that pin back a couple frames forward then we're gonna slide this all the way across like so then we're gonna find where we push it back uh, right, right there and we're gonna just bring this back over here so now if we watch this section back uh you'll you'll see we got this uh pulse but you may have noticed this starts moving before we push the pin back so we gotta do some messing around with our splines so go up to the top spline check the rectangle this little button right here zoom to fit highlight everything hit f on your keyboard that's to flatten out the curve okay okay it's a little bit better but what we could do is extend this out if we hold alt and drag this point to the right it's just gonna hang out here a little bit longer so yeah that's how you add this pulsing effect but you know what because we already have the op rotoscoped out we can add a little bit of depth of field here so 
before all of this, let's add a defocus node. Yeah. But don't worry, we're gonna take the output of our roto, connect that to the blue arrow. It's only applying the blur to the, the op, but you know what? We can go into the settings of our defocus and then just apply the mask inverted. So let's add a defocus size keyframe here, go to the beginning, bring it down to zero. After everything, we're going to add a transform node, add a center keyframe, maybe an angle keyframe. But anyways, this is where we added the full defocusness. So with our transform, we're gonna zoom in here. And with our pivot, we're gonna bring that down. And um, then we can change the angle of it and we can move this over to the left. But if you wanna get real fancy, we could add, uh, you know, those black bars. Uh, so just grab like a, a background node and then grab um, the rectangle, invert it with, and then just make your, your height whatever you want. But of course, we gotta zoom out now. So let's move over some, add a size and angle keyframe, then move over some more. Right when we scope in, we're gonna reset all this, and then we just gotta mess with our spline once again. Zoom to fit, highlight everything, hit F, Oh my God, I almost forgot. We got to add uh, some more keyframes for the, the defocus. The keyframe here, when we zoom out, it's right there. Bring our defocus size back down to zero. And I'm just gonna fix this graph so it fits with everything. This is looking pretty good, but we can make it look even better just by adding some motion blur. So in between our transform and this, we're gonna hit shift space, optical flow, Shift space once again, vector motion blur. Now because of the motion blur, this is a killer on your PC, but if we go to playback, render cache, change it to smart, you're gonna get this loading bar right here. And uh, once it turns blue, you're gonna have smooth playback. So yeah, that's how you make this op pulse effect thingamabob. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or you can join the Discord and either myself or one of the helpers can help you. If you wanna support the channel, all you gotta do is leave a like. But if you wanna support in a more direct way, well, I set up YouTube memberships. You can get like badges, emotes, a special role in the Discord. And as an appreciation, I'll give you a shout out in my video. Okay, that's the end of the video. Goodbye.